comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. Maths is a terrible subject studied by awful people. Or maybe I'm just jealous because I sucked it at school. It's, it's really hard to know for sure, you guys. Though despite being seen by many as the subject that is the complete polar opposite to language and linguistics, a field of study I'm a tad more comfortable with but equally failed at school. It is full of interesting words. There are so many words in the world of maths that come from rather unique and interesting origins. Take the word of algebra, which still runs a shiver down my spine to this day. It comes from the Arabic algebra, meaning the reunion of broken parts, which makes sense as a lot of algebra is all about putting together missing parts of equations. Then we have arithmetic, which comes from the Greek arithmetic, which means the art of counting, which is probably the most romantic description of maths I've ever heard. Trigonometry is once again Greek and comes from their words of three and counter, which makes sense as it relates to the study of the corners of three-sided shapes. Calculus comes from fun root two. It comes from the Latin calculus, which means reckoning. However, it initially meant a pebble used as a counter, which is really cute. Geometry is once again Greek and means measurement of Earth. And of course, Pythagoras is named after the dumb dude who invented it. Maths is full of seriously interesting words, but perhaps the most interesting of them all is that simple word of maths itself. Or as my viewers from across the Atlantic Ocean call it, math. This is one of those popular points of contention between British English and American English. In British English, the word ends with an S being maths, while in American English there is a lack of an S altogether and the word is just math. In other parts of the English speaking world there seems to be this divide too. From what little research I did, I gathered that Canadian English follows the lead of their southern siblings and say math, while in Aussie English they follow their former colonizers and say maths. Let me know how the word is said wherever you are in the world, even if it's not English. Though from what I can gather, this word never strays too far from math or maths in other languages. The Japanese sugaku, however, is relatively unique. Maths versus math isn't even the only case of Brits and Americans not agreeing on whether an S should be used or not. Another great debate slash example is with the little plastic bricks I spend way too much money on. Though in this case, it's the other way around. In British English, we just say Lego, while in American English, you hear Legos. In reality, these are actually both wrong. In fact, according to the House of Bricks themselves, Lego isn't even a noun. It's an adjective and should always be followed by a noun, e.g. Lego brick, Lego set, Lego house, and so on. While the Lego versus Legos debate has a clear answer, is that the case for the maths versus math debate? Well, why don't we figure out where exactly the word of maths comes from? And yeah, for the record, when talking about this subject and not comparing the spelling, I will be using maths with an S, as I'm British and that's just the way I say it. Cool? Cool. Maths isn't too complex of a word to figure out. In fact, it is simply just a shortening of a longer word and one of those cases where by and large, the shortening has become way more popular than the initial word, with that initial word being mathematics. This word is from ancient Greek root and comes from their word meaning to learn, as maths was simply all about learning those numbers and processes. While mathematics may now relate solely to the learning of all things numbers, this word, as we can see, initially had a broader meaning. Math can simply mean learn, and even the modern Greek word of learn still sounds similar to it. This explains to us why we may see the word math appear in other non-number and sum related words, like castromophy, which according to Wikipedia is a collection of literary passages chosen to help someone learn a foreign language. You can see the word math just at the end there, relating to the learning aspect of castromophy. Though a more well-known example, and probably the one I should have started with, is polymath, which means someone who has learnt a lot of things in different subject areas. Something you probably noticed about the word mathematics is that, like the British English maths, it ends with an S. Does this give credence to my beloved British English maths being the correct way to spell and use this word? Well, not quite. One of the big sticking points between these two ways of spelling and saying the word is the argument that maths is a plural word, so it should have an S at the end of it. I'm sure you all know what exactly pluralization is, but just for completionist's sake, a plural is when we change 
change the spelling of a word, more often than not a noun, to demonstrate the fact that there are multiple of that thing. While there are multiple different ways to change a word into a plural in English, the most commonly seen way of doing it is by adding an S to the end of a word. E.g. cat implies there is just one cat, but cats with an S on the end implies that there are way more than just one cat, perhaps too many cats. Why S got the honor of being the main letter used to create plurals is beyond me, though that could be a fun video topic in the future. Someone, someone take note. Does this mean that mathematics and in terms the British English shortening on maths is a plural? Well, no, not at all. If a British school kid says something like, I have maths today, it means they have just one lesson on maths, or maybe a double period, and if that's the case, then may God have mercy on their soul. It does not mean they have multiple different maths lessons in different classes or anything like that. The same applies if a British kid were to say, I have mathematics tomorrow, though kids don't really call the subject mathematics, at least not in the schools I went to anyway. So how did mathematics end up being a singular noun that ends with an S? Well, while singular nouns that end with an S aren't completely unheard of, there's the likes of octopus and trousers. There's something else going on here. S is a letter with a ton of functions. Seriously, it is carrying the other 25 letters on its back. As well as being a letter that makes a sound in words unto itself, it can also, as mentioned, make words plural, and it can also be used to make words possessive. While these three functions of the letter S are quite commonly seen, it has yet a another not as commonly used function too. Sometimes S is used to make certain words into a singular noun. By and large, those certain words are adjectives. That might sound strange. Using S to make a word singular when making them plural is so often the case, but it makes a lot more sense if we look at some examples. New is an adjective that means something is fresh and recently created. However, when we add an S to the end of new, we have the word news. This is a noun and it's the name for current events of interest. News is also kind of singular too. Like if you say you are watching the news, it means you are watching just one news channel or one episode of the news, though it tends to be multiple news stories. There's also the adjective of acoustic, like we see with acoustic guitar, yet adding an S gives us the abstract noun of acoustics, as in, the acoustics are great in my shower. This meant the word started life as mathematic and then became mathematics, a singular noun that ends with an S. From this perspective, it makes sense as to why we have the British English shortening of math. This word to them always ended with an S, even though they knew it wasn't a plural. So why change that in the shortened form of the name? British English has a habit of keeping with tradition, even if it isn't too logical. The earliest recording we have of maths in British English seems to come from 1911. Prior to this, most people were saying mathematics every time they needed to talk about the study of numbers. Can you imagine? It sounds tiring. Though, this shows us that British short form of this name has been around for over 100 years. And while that is a pretty long time, what's really impressive is the fact that the American English shortening of math is actually even older. We have evidence of math in American English dating back to 1829. If you believe in the school of thought that whatever came first is the right answer, then that should clear things up for you. But it makes me, and hopefully yourself, wonder why this change in the English language happened. Why was it this word gained an S in British English, slash lost an S in American English? Well, this is just my own theory on the matter, but I think it has to do with the fundamental approach in which British and American people take with the language. We have highlighted British and American English in previous videos, and when it comes to spelling in the two varieties of English, it seems that British English takes a more traditional approach. British English tends to keep spelling the same way it has been for many, many years, out of a sense of tradition and respect for the language, despite how illogical it may seem when compared to how those words are actually pronounced. American English English doesn't seem too bothered about holding onto these traditional spellings of words, and are more than happy to be a lot more logical with their take on the language. They, more often than not, spell words in the way in which they sound. Take the word center, which in British English is spelt C-E-N-T-R-E, -E, whereas in American English it is spelt C-E-N-T-E-R. You cannot deny that the American spelling makes way more sense in regards to how this word is pronounced. While British English has kept on using the version of the word that came to them via the Norman invasion all the way back in 1066 because tradition aka peer pressure from dead people.
This logical approach to spelling that American English has is perfectly at place with the American term of math too. They know that math isn't a plural, and by and large, singular nouns do not end with an S, so why include one? Meanwhile, the term of maths in British English makes perfect sense for how British English deals with words. British English likes to keep with tradition, regardless of how illogical it may seem. And this is the language doing exactly that, because mathematics also ends with an S. Though, as we all also established, it also comes from that concept of adding an S to an adjective to create a noun. This gave us two different versions of the word in two different varieties of English. Though I must stress, this is just my own idea on the matter. It also makes sense with the aforementioned Lego versus Legos debate too. I honestly get why Americans say Legos. You never really play with just one brick, so pluralizing the word makes a ton of sense. So which one is correct? Math or maths? Well, sorry to disappoint, but there really isn't a right or wrong answer with this one. Both make complete and logical sense in the version of English in which they are found in, but sound completely alien to those who speak the other form of English. Though in all honesty, most words in the world of math sound completely alien to myself anyway. I really should have paid more attention in class. This video topic was suggested by Amorka over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a name explain video and wish to enjoy name explain videos ad free as well as get exclusive content, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit Patreon com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that, plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.